So we're going to start again. So if you, so the first thing we do is to look at the eyelids themselves. So okay. not not the eyeballs. So just look at the eyelids. So you look at the maybe look at the bottom one first. Have it on a nice wide beam here. Yeah. So this adjusts the width of the beam. Okay. okay. And this is a magnification here. Okay. So you have it on a low magnification. So I've got it on ten. Okay. okay. So it's the mark there it shows you the magnification. So to look at the outside of the eye, you normally have it on the low magnification to look at the eyelids with. Okay. And then to look at more detail, you, you gradually increase it. Okay. So, so look at the eyelids themselves, look at the lashes, the direction that they, they're growing in, yeah. are they touching the cornea? Um, and then you get the patient to look up, and you ask them to, to hold down the eyelids, look at the how pe pebble comes from the they call it, okay. to see if there's anything, um, any bumps there, sometimes there's follicles yeah. there, which can indicate like a, a, an infection, a viral infection, conjunctivitis, yeah. or there's some, um, or an allergy as well. Okay. okay, and then you get the patient to look down, you can hold up the eyes, and just look at the sclera, conjunctiva. Yeah. Another thing you can do, I'm not going to do on this gentleman, but you can turn the top eyelid inside yeah, out yes. and you can look at the um, uh, oh, papillary yeah. conjunct over on the top eyelid as well. Yeah. Um, I think this man general symptoms more to do with his tuition okay. than the eyelid. So now, now we look at the eye itself, so you look at the cornea. So um, for this you need a slightly narrower slit, we call it a parallel pipette. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you look at my ear again, so, yeah, and you just have it so it creates a, a section of the cornea, and you're just looking, looking at the edge to see if there's any new vessels that are growing into the mm -hmm. sides, seeing if there's any cloudiness in it, and you're doing it, looking at the front of it to see if there's any um, defects in the epithelium, and you can increase the magnification. Okay. So you're looking at that. There's different techniques you can look at the cornea with. You can have a slit so it's very narrow, like that. They call that, um, it's like a cross section of the cornea. Okay. <laughs> and you can increase the magnification yeah. to look at that. Um, a good one, perhaps, for you to do, if you look straight ahead, so is to, if you shine it like that. On the, just on the limbus, yeah, okay, and you can see, um, you can see uh, the light coming the other side of the limbus. Can you see? It's, yes, yes, it's coming out the other side. Yeah, and uh, any defects in the cornea can show up as little light patches on the cornea. So um, this gentleman's cornea hasn't got any um, any scars or defects there because the light is just coming out straight out the other side. Okay, um, and you can look at the anterior chamber, yeah. so that's behind the cornea. For that, you need smaller beam. So, so this is the width of your beam. Sunlight here. I'm not too familiar with this, but there's a height on somewhere. Uh, that's here. Yeah. So that's the height of the beam. See, it's got, got longer. Yeah. To look at the anterior chamber, you actually want it quite small, like that. Yeah. Okay. So if you look straight ahead again, so, and you put it back at a narrow beam through the anterior chamber, and you need to do it really dark. Yeah. Okay. And you're looking for, it's like dust in a room. You know, if you ever see sunlight coming through a window, yeah. you see dust particles floating yes, in the air. Yes. So it's like that, but you're looking for uh, the information. It's like dust particles in the anterior chamber, and there's two things: it's cells and flare. Yeah. Looking for, so it's quite good to look for that in patients that have had cataract surgery. Yeah. Um, you often get post-operative um, inflammation, yeah. which we treat with steroids. Yeah. So it's, it's a good technique to learn. Yeah. Um, I've got some notes on this. I can perhaps email to you. Yeah. Um, and then you can look at the lens, which is really good for looking at cataracts. So for this one you need optic section again, which is the long one, quite a narrow, uh, narrow beam, so like that. Okay, and just uh, push it forward, just it forward. 
and you get a section of the, of the lens. It's like looking at the lens if you chopped it in half. Oh. And you can look for different types of cataracts, like oh. cortical cataracts, posterior subcapsular, nucleus sclerosis, and three types. Oh, okay. um, oh, so, yeah. um, and then uh, you can look at the vitreous behind the lens. So uh, you can look at things like if there's pigment in the vitreous can show that they've just got a retinal detachment, things like that, but that's probably enough for now. Mm -hmm. And you can have a lens as well, called a Volk lens that you hold in front of the patient's eye yeah. um, to look inside the eye. Okay. Um, but you can't look inside the eye with the lamp as it is now. You need okay. an extra lens to do that. Okay. okay. Yeah.